what's up everybody so this next episode we talk about the spirit event that i went and after the event i decided to go do some walking on the shikoku pilgrimage so we'll talk about that and talk about the spirit and check it out all right What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Yamato Zamashi podcast. Last week, we were talking all about the rising events. And to continue that JMA theme, I thought we'd just jump into first about your time doing the Spirit Show, which was a whole brand new promotion, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, we just had that, and it was, uh, it was crazy because uh, I got back. I actually had to extend my trip to help out Rising with their thing. And I extended my trip, and... When they they wanted me to stay to the second because the trials were on the first, the second I get back to Japan on the third at night, and I got to jump on the train in the morning to go to Kyoto on the bullet train. So I had I literally had no time at home. Pretty much got home, unpacked, went to sleep, woke up, packed, and jumped on the train. So went straight down to Kyoto for the spirit event, and they wanted me down there at eleven o'clock. This just, uh, event started at four. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to leave the house at 630 in the morning. <laughs> so I, I just left at eight, got there at, uh, I got there at about 1230. That's pretty good. Went, checked in my hotel every there, over there. Yeah. And, you know, I was supposed to actually go and come back in the same day. I wanted to get back home to have some downtime, but I actually got offered a hotel, which was an unreal hotel. One of my, one of my, uh, my students, uh, friends runs a hotel there and they they let me stay in there free it's about a thousand dollar a night hotel wow and 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 you know if you you saw the videos on it so there's a gold room (laughs) yeah there's a gold room that has all everything was gold the walls the 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 teacups the brushes everything in there was gold i mean it's like damn (laughs) <laughs> my royalty right that's crazy yeah so uh, because we had the room i figured ah, i stay at night so mm. you know we we uh we got there checked in the room met with the promoter and uh got into the um into our little you know little they have a room in the back of the event to for the you know people to rest and we went, got in there and just rested and waited for the you know the fight to start nice and so how, how were the fights how many how many fights were on the card there's only four fights. Wow, small. There weren't a lot. They didn't have any uh, spectators. Pretty much, it was all sponsors and VIP guests. Hmm. It was a small hmm. arena that only had, I think, it only held about a hundred people. So yeah, when I went there, man, the ring was pretty much like eight feet by eight feet. Wow. Okay. Tiny <laughs> ring. There was uh, the mat was real thin. It was concrete ground with a little thin layer of padding only. And when I saw that, I was like, "Whoa, this is crazy!" Right. And you know, I mean, of course, it says it's my promotion, but I actually, I was actually just. They called me to use my name and use my face, and they paid me a big guarantee. And pretty much, uh, I didn't really know a lot about the event. So it, it actually, uh, I didn't know what to expect. But yeah, I mean, the fights went on, the four fights. Pretty good fights. I, um, I got to say it's more amateur level than pros. Mm-hmm. But it was good because they kind of threw down. It was kind of an exciting fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had uh, little gloves and no one actually, they went to a ground very little. It was more like a, a boxing match. Okay. Yeah, and it was exciting. It was exciting. Uh, good fights, four fights, I think. Only two of the fights went the distance. Uh, the other two was knockouts. Wow, nice. So it was exciting. Yeah, real short, short night, man. By 5.30, we're done. Yeah. The event started a little late. Um, and in the middle of the, right before the main event, they had some famous rappers come out. Okay. And they cool. were good, man. They were super good. It's pretty cool. Wow, this is quite, it's quite a surprise. It's just like a sort of niche sort of, 
you know, hundred person audience, right? And then you've got rappers performing and stuff as surprise. I mean, uh, is it is it plans to be like a long term promotion or is this just kind of like a one and done sort of thing? Yeah, well, they want to have the, they they they've been calling it the number one event, so the first event. Mm -hmm. So apparently, they want to have more events. They um, you know, they want to have more, but if they're going to have more and they're going to use my name from now. I'm definitely going to demand a bigger guarantee and I'm definitely going to have more hands on in the event. Cause if my name's attached to it, I need to know who's fighting. I needed to know what size the ring is. If the ring is safe, who's mm -hmm. the sponsors. Cause I want to greet the sponsors. I didn't meet anybody. Yeah. So that was cool for the first one, but if we're going to have a second one, I mean, it's, it's going to be my name behind it. So yeah, I'm definitely going to take more control of what's happening. And to secure that, I actually brought home the belt. <laughs> well, they, wanted, they, they wanted to have it be a title match, but I disagreed with that because I didn't believe that there should be a title match on the first fight of the night. You know, first fight, the guy who was going to fight for the title was a, guy, a boxer that was going to fight MMA for the first time. Right. And I just didn't agree that uh, it should be a title match. And I, they were really against, they really wanted it to be a title match. They made a belt and everything. Let me go get it. Hold on. All right, cool. So they made this beautiful belt for the title. But because they were going to have a title, they only displayed the belt. Right. And I, you know, as you know, these events, you know, sometimes they don't even have a second one. Mm hmm. They, I was kind of, they actually asked me ideas on the belt. So I'm actually the one who gave ideas on the design of the belt. Okay. So I thought to myself, if they're going to have a second one, they helped me design the belt. I'm going to be the face of the event. I'm going to take home the belt. I'm going to hold it until they have the second event. And if they don't, it's, it's going to be my belt. But check it out. Very beautiful belt. Check this out. Wow, that's really nice. Look at the sides. This cool. Look at that's the sides. Really nice. Tamashi on it. Tama, <laughs> the the store in kanji. Yeah. Beautiful belt, huh? It is a really nice so, belt. So yeah, so I'm the champ. <laughs> yeah, so I'm holding on to this until they have the next event. And I'm gonna of course bring it down when they have the next event. And eventually when they do have a, a champion. I'll be giving that belt to the champion. So looking forward to it. I, I'm, I, I do want to be more hands on this event because I see it as it has a chance to promote not winning and losing, but to, for fighters to fight hard. Mm -hmm. And I do want to, I, the, the first, this first event, the four fights were all amateurish. There was one guy that was really good. Right. Other than that, they were all amateur fighters. So I, you know, I definitely want to, be more hands-on of the selecting the competitors and make sure they're all at a high level. Mm -hmm. So it'll be, take a lot more of my time. So of course I'm going to demand a, a, a much bigger guarantee, maybe three or four times more than I got paid this time. Makes sense. If you put more effort in, you're yeah. right. You've got to be compensated for your time. Um, was the first so, yeah. event yeah. filmed? I was going to say, was it filmed at all? The first event? Yes, it was filmed. It was filmed. <clears throat> it was exactly. filmed and I got all the footage. Yeah, so um, I'll send you the rappers when they sang so you can put this on when you could. They're super good. It was funny because um, the Japanese YouTube team, team came up with it. They came up to watch for me. Yep. And then when they saw the rappers, they're like, oh, my God, those guys are so huge. And said, so you got to try and get a picture with them. I'm like, okay, I don't know who these guys are, but um, if it's going to be good for the channel, I'll get a picture with them. And it was so funny because when they came up, I was like, holy shit, these guys are good. Yeah. And after they finished their rap and everything, I you, I was walking out and they came up to me and said, oh, my God, Ensign, so we're big fans. Can we get a picture of you? I'm like, perfect. I want a picture of you, too. Nice. So we got to talk and then they, we, we've decided that we're going to probably have them on the Japanese YouTube sometime. Cool. So apparently they're, they're really good, but they're really famous. I didn't I, you know, I don't follow the hip hop scene in Japan, so I didn't really know. Yeah, I don't really know too much Japanese hip hop uh, either, except for Death Tech. Japanese hip hop 
pretty good actually i really yeah like that, it. i always hear I bits but, but never like um yeah it's, it's hard to follow the scene it's quite hard to follow i think but. yeah 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 so it was real funny because after the event it was you know um nothing i just i was on my own after that we you know i had my youtube team with me so we just jumped in the car the promoter didn't take the guy who arranged everything didn't take us to dinner or anything so we went straight to eat we went back to the room relaxed in that beautiful room and they had this huge uh, food or like a, a, the bath is made of this special type of wood that's supposed to be really good for your health sitting in there yeah huge ass beds i mean look like you're built for a king so yeah we enjoyed that and you know it was funny because when i was sitting in the room thinking wow two hours drive down south i'm in shikoku i already wanted to do the pilgrimage before the end of the year and instead of making a trip all the way from saitama you know it's if i if i i already was like more than halfway there on their bill so i figured i just gotta make a Short drive into Shikoku, down two hours, and I'm there. So called Sarah, mentioned that to her. She said, yeah, probably a good idea. And so I headed out to Shikoku. Yeah, so. Nice. Got down to Shikoku. Um, first, lo and behold, first day, huge typhoon hits. Can't, can't do much in a typhoon. You know, try to stay dry. Strong winds. Just pretty much took refuge somewhere safe and uh the next two days was really nice so i got to cover a lot of ground the next two days and got a lot done got got a, you know walked about i'd say about you know 12 hours a day wow i had a real casual time you know just uh no rush taking my time enjoying it it wasn't the full pilgrimage just a partial okay cool because yep i just went and enjoyed it so, so for people that don't know, right, the Shikoku pilgrimage, that, from what I've read, it's you know, it's a, it's a sort of a, a walk around the island because Shikoku is like a, a separate island to Japan, so like it comes, yeah, yeah, and there's different temples you visit, right? So maybe if you could just explain what it is to people that don't know. So there's 108 temples. Wow. And it covers 880 miles. If you if you don't get lost and you travel directly, that's a long mile. You know, like. It's two thousand something. Wait, let me let me find that out. So eight hundred eighty miles would be about a a hundred one thousand four hundred kilo kilometers. Wow. So about a hundred thousand four hundred kilometers, and um, the hard part about that pilgrimage is a lot of it. Not, I think seventy percent of it is in the mountains. It's all mountain trails. Mm -hmm. So you know, the, when I did the walk across Japan, it was. Uh, I think it was 2,100. No, it was it was less. It was 1,316 miles or something like that. So it was actually shorter. I mean, it was actually a lot longer, but it was way easier because it was all on paved roads and there was barely any mountain paths. Right. So yeah, the Shikoku pilgrimage is a is a full circle pilgrimage. That takes you through, you know, kilometers or a thousand. What I said, I forgot what I said. A lot. A <laughs> thousand four hundred uh, kilometers. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a health pilgrimage. People would do it to pray for health for their family. Wow, that's cool. And you know, I I do it every year. I try to do it every year, at least once or twice, in sections. And you know, of course, you always want good health, so I pray for good health. And I also pick up these, uh, they call them bangai beads. That uh, I don't have any of them on right now, but yeah, they're bangai beads that uh, are breath blessed for health. So I'll send you pictures of that too, so you can put that up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you, you did this completely by yourself then? Yeah, so the first time I did it, um, it was a full circle. I did a full one. I walked it all in one shot. And when it, before I went, I, I thought you know, it would be cool to bring one of my students with me. And it was interesting because when I actually talked to a priest about it, they said that the first one you do, it should definitely be do, done alone. I was like, wow, why? He said, because you'll get the best, the most out of it. 
And I decided, okay, I don't know what he means really, but I decided to do it alone. And it was amazing because what, what I realized, I realized that what he meant was, you know, when you do the pilgrimage, because you're walking, you know, you, you, in life, there's three, three sufferings in life. There's the physical suffering, there's uh, emotional suffering and there's mental suffering. Interesting thing about the pilgrim is you're hitting all three of these sufferings at a very severe level all at one time. So physical suffering would be once you're walking, you know, two days, 12 hours a day, you're already developing blisters on your feet, cramps in your legs. So right there is a physical suffering. Mm. The emotional mm. suffering is you're doing it alone. Nobody to talk to, no friends. So it's really out of peace. I'm not a lonely person. I'm not a people person. I, I can do things alone, but by you know, you walk in the pilgrimage, it makes you really feel lonely by yourself. A lot of time for your thoughts, mm. but you know, there's no friends to laugh with. Even when you're suffering, there's it's easier to suffer when you're saying, Oh man, I got you got blisters too. Oh shit, man. You know, but you're sitting there by yourself looking at your blisters, wondering how much worse it's gonna get. That's the emotional suffering and then when you talk about the mental suffering you know you walk two days straight you look on the map that you're you have the course of it you're going to walk and it's like a little dot on the map and you're thinking holy shit i just walked two days all day and i covered a little dot that's how much more i have i have uh, from the little dot i have a full circle to do and and mentally that's very very defeating hmm so that I understood. That's when I understood that. Oh, that's why you get the best out of it because you hit those, those three sufferings at a very severe level, all at one time, and you got to deal with it alone. Mm. It's easier if you're with a friend and you know you're, you're low. You know, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I hate how your feet hurt. Yeah, that's so hot. We got to get up tomorrow, and walk on the blisters. Yeah, shit. And you're suffering together. It's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I whenever I do these, I do them alone. So wow. this one too, I, I drove up and went and did it alone. So where, how does it work with like you say you walk all day and then where do you stay in the evenings? Then I just find places to stay. You know, bus stops, uh, usually on chairs in front of Whoa. supermarkets. Wow. Yeah, so I remember so you saying in the the war for Japan, right? You. You did, you did it where, you know, sometimes you were lucky enough people would let you come and stay. So it's the same kind of thing then, essentially, where you don't same have a guarantee. Because they stay. I'm there for so short, it's not really, I don't have people put me up in houses for this one. Or the or the ones when I do it in sections, not, not, not really. Unless a fan would walk by or something. But other than that, no, I'm pretty much trying to find a place. You know, like the, the hard part is when there's a typhoon hitting and the wind is blowing. Yeah. It eliminates 90% of the places that you could actually sleep because you get wet. So yeah, that makes it really difficult. But after the typhoon pass, it's a lot easier, you know, bus stops, parks. You you usually want to be able to find a, a bench or something that's lifted up because there's snakes in Shikoku. Wow. They have, wow. there's, <laughs> there's, vipers, there's vipers that are, I think, pound for pound, the most venomous, venomous snakes in the world. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, you want to sleep above ground. So I never did. I did sleep on the ground, but it was only when you sleep. And it would sleep in front of, on the side of convenience stores, like a 7-Eleven. But that's all paved roads. So the bushes are far, so snakes don't venture out into the paved roads much. If you're in a park or in, 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 a, in a wilderness area, you need to always sleep up on a, a bench. Wow. Okay, that's crazy. That's I mean, you talk about mental strength, right? Just to not even know where you're going to be sleeping. You're going to have to find somewhere that you can sleep. I'm guessing, I, is it because you're so tired from all the walking, you can kind of just sleep in these harsh conditions then? Not necessarily. No? <laughs> because the more tired you are, the more sound rest you need to recuperate. Wow. Yeah. And you don't yeah, get yeah. good rest. The, the ground is really hard. Mm. Uh, you know, you, you got all these other elements that you don't get when you're sleeping indoors. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the amazing thing about the pilgrimage is I believe in life, there's three circles in life. There's one circle of things that really annoy you, like, you know, traffic, rude people. Maybe if you, you're one of those people that don't like rain, you know. Mm -hmm. There's another circle that things that don't matter. Like, say, um, 
the sun, the sunlight. You don't really care about the sunlight. Uh, bushes, you know, even like, uh, you know, your house, you take it for granted. You know, it, it doesn't make you happy or doesn't make you sad or you don't hate it. And then there's those things that make you happy, you know, good food, you know, a massage maybe, you know, um, going in, going out and meeting friends, you know, you, all these things that make you happy. So everything in your life is put in one of those circles. Yeah. And, you know, if you point something like you look at the door back there, that's part of your life. It's a door in your house. It probably doesn't irritate you. You're looking at the door. It doesn't make you happy. It probably goes into a circle that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So what I found on the pilgrimage is, um, you know, things that irritated me. Like, for example, after I was finished the pilgrimage, I went and lined up in the line. And as I lined up in the line, a bunch of Chinese tourists came in and started cutting in line. And, you know, it's like oh, you're standing wow. there and it's like, Jesus Christ, just line up in the back of us. But they keep cutting in line. And, and back before I did the pilgrimage, I would have been assertive and I would have went up to them and told them to get in the back of the line, line up like everyone else. And for me to have to do that, it would have disturbed me. It would have bothered me. So it definitely goes into something that makes me irritated. When I was in the pilgrimage, after the pilgrimage, I went into a, a pharmacy to, to buy a drink. I'm standing in line and the, the, these, these, Japanese, these um, Chinese tourists start cutting. And I'm looking at them thinking, that's rude. But you know what? I'm buying a cold drink that I never could buy on the pilgrimage. I'm standing in air condition. And you know what? After I buy this drink, I jump in my car and drive home. I don't need to walk another 12 hours on blisters. What's another three minutes standing here letting them cut? And it actually that that actually went into the circle that didn't bother me. Wow. Driving, I hate traffic. Traffic's one of those things that go into my irritation circle. Yeah. But hey, I'm in traffic, listening to music with aircon on, and I'm sitting my ass on the seat and my moving and clearing clearing ground. I'm yeah. not walking. And right there, traffic doesn't matter because now I appreciate being in the car. I appreciate being able to listen to music with air con and having a cool drink in my hand. Mm. You know, so that was one of those things that didn't, you know, that irritated me that went into the circle that didn't matter. And then, so that circle, irritation circle definitely got smaller. And, and you know, the, the circle that didn't matter, a lot of irritation stuff's going into that circle, but it doesn't get bigger because there's a lot of stuff that moved out of that circle into things that made me happy. Like a mm. cold glass of water. Going to the same, going to the ice box and grabbing some ice and pouring me a cold glass of water, that really didn't matter before. That was just yeah. okay. I get a cold glass of water, big deal. But now, when the pilgrimage, I could never get a cold glass of water, and it was like, now it's something that really makes me happy. And the big thing is, you know, like tonight when you go into bed, try mm -hmm. try think about this. Going to bed, you're probably thinking about what you did that day. Or you're thinking about what time you got to get up tomorrow and what you got to do tomorrow. But you, it's it's like the roof over your head, you know, the, the bed you sleep in. Because you do it every day, you take it for granted. So it's something that actually is in the circle that doesn't matter. Mm. It doesn't make you happy. It doesn't make you mad. It's one of those things that, ah, cool, I got it, you know, and you take it for granted. Yeah. Okay, so what, when you're on the pilgrimage, you're walking all day. You got to search after five o'clock when the temple's closed. You got to search for somewhere safe and somewhere that, you know, you won't get bothered. You won't get any insects on you. You won't bother people where you, you, you know, you're not in front of a store that's going to bother people. And you, you, you don't want to really stand out in the crowd too much because you don't want, you know, people, you know, telling you to move or getting angry at you. You're sleeping on the hard ground. And if it rains, you know what's going to happen? You got to get up and move because the 90% the, the of the spots that you possibly might take is not going to be good if it rains. So for me, after every single night walking the pilgrimage and having to, after five o'clock, having to find a place, sometimes it takes me four hours to find a good place to sleep. Hmm. When I finally do lay down, it's a hard ground, so you don't get very good sleep. After doing that every night for the, of the pilgrimage, the, 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 when I get back from the pilgrimage, now I get into my bed now knowing that there's a roof over my head. And if it rains, 
I can hear the rain, but I don't need to move, and I can not worry about anything. Get sound sleep. The bed's soft. If it's hot, I got aircon. If it's cold, I mean, if it's cold, I got heater. I got a blanket, and I got a soft bed to lay in. And wow. now, you know, after the pilgrimage, getting into bed, something as simple as getting into bed, I appreciate it. It makes me super happy. So, you know, my level, the circle of things that make me happy definitely has gotten a lot bigger. And it makes you a happier person. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. obviously, if the circle of things that make you happy got bigger, it makes you a happier person than you were. So, you know, that that's the kind of things. It's a small example of the kind of things in the pilgrimage that you experience. And I can tell you this. So you'll say, okay, tonight I'll go lay in my bed and appreciate it. But until you really do suffer and have yeah. to find a place to sleep, you realize when you do find a good place, it's not even a tenth of what you have at home. You really, truly can't sit and lay in bed and wholeheartedly, with the bottom of your heart, appreciate what you have in the in, in a soft bed and a roof over your head. That's awesome. Yeah, it's 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 almost like the pilgrimage sort of like resets your values, right? You know, uh, and you know, human nature. You start. I mean, I can't say that I've been a changed man. Where now I'm, I'm enlightened, and I always appreciate these things that I should appreciate. No, no, I fall back on it again. And there's some times where things that shouldn't didn't irritate me anymore, I get irritated with it. And it's, it's a big thing. That, it's a big joke that Sarah looks at me and goes, I think your time is you do for a pilgrimage, you know? <laughs> <So> <laughs> reset, dude, reset. You're getting a little upset over stupid shit. You know, she sends so, you packing. <laughs> so, yeah, you, I think you should go on a pilgrimage soon, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm... it's it's a it's a real enlightening thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing I'm really curious about is when you go on a pilgrimage, what do you bring with you? What do you take with you? Um, when I went on the full pilgrimage where I take, a, I, I did the whole thing on one, one shot. What I did was I brought dry packs because for myself, it's not a rule in the pilgrimage, but for myself to, to make it a lot harder and to make me learn a lot more and suffer a lot more, I didn't allow myself to buy food. So what I did was I bought nine dry packs and I put it in my bag and all I needed to do is put warm water in it. And it right. turns out to a meal and it's pretty delicious. But other than that, um, you realize you, you, um, relay, you, you rely on uh, uh, donations. Like there's people stop and stop and give you bread. They give you drinks. Some people put you up in their houses and feed you dinner and give you some rice balls to leave for breakfast. You know, so that um, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, you you really experience there is kind of roughing it. Yeah. Yeah. man, That is a crazy experience. What about um, if anyone's thinking of doing one that's never done one before? What would your advice be to them? Um, take, don't don't a lot of time limit. Because uh, you're going to get lost and. If you have a time limit, the stress level is going to increase, and you don't want it. You don't want that. There's enough stress doing the pilgrimage as it is, working through the pain of the body, working through the reading the maps, working through having to, you know, when you walk and you get lost. When you got a car, not too bad. You turn, get back in like five minutes. But sometimes you walk a couple hours and you realize you're on the wrong course, and you got to walk back a couple hours. So you know, a lot, a lot that probably happening. So you don't freak out when it does. Mm. Allow a lot of time and take your time and accept that you're going to get lost and make, you know, going to have to backtrack a lot. The first thing that I would recommend on the pilgrimage is bring two pairs of shoes. Because yeah. you're going to fart blisters within three days. So the reason why you want to bring two pairs is you just, all you need to do is change shoes because the new, the other shoe, whether it's the same brand, same size, doesn't matter it's not going to hit the same places in the feet. So you're going to give, it's still going to hurt. You know, when you have blisters on your feet from the shoes, even if you take off the shoes and wear slippers, it'll still hurt because you already have blisters there. But the the shoe won't pinpoint the same area of the blister. So it'll start hitting somewhere else, allowing that part of the blister to heal, but it's creating another blister in a different spot. 
And of course, you're going to have more blisters come up, but at least you're allowing the first ones to heal. And when that one starts healing and the other ones start getting bad, you change shoes again. So that's the rest of your recommendations is to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Two pairs. God, I just hear you talk about it. Bring bring only what you need. Don't bring pots and pans. Don't bring, you know, too much. You know, I bring two pairs of shirt, two pairs of underwear. And just wash them as you go because the weight of your backpack is going to cramp your shoulders. It's the way the pain of your shoulders from the backpack is 10 times worse than the pain of your feet and your muscles and your blisters. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, yeah, I give my more respect for those army guys. They got to run with a 30 pound pack or a 50 pound pack on their back. It's mm. amazing how cramped up your shoulders and your back. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it sounds like such a balance, right? Of like between traveling light, but also having like essentials. You know, you got to. It's funny because work. the first one I went on, I put a, I had my backpack pack, and it was I, I, I could have sworn that it was only things I need. But by the eighth temple, I threw out half the shit. Really? Wow. Because the pain on my shoulders was so bad. All of a sudden, things that I definitely need. Mm. change and i was like i don't need this i don't need this i don't need this and i lightened my backpack in half so how many pilgrimages do you think you've done overall i've done uh, the full pilgrimage i've done two of them right i've done one a full course and two i did in sections and this is right now i'm on the third one just doing it in different sections oh nice so you can pick it up and then carry yeah i'll just pick up where i left off and continue and just pick up where i left on and it's not a rush. I mean, even if I finish it in a couple of years, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I, I do entertain the fact of actually doing a full one again. And of course, this time would be really interesting is documenting the whole thing better. Mm -hmm. Book two covers my pilgrimage. And it's so funny because I, I did a diary on the pilgrimage. Nice. So it was an interesting diary. So a uh, whole chapter of the pilgrimage on that is pretty much just excerpts from the diary that's cool i can't wait to read that look out for book two about shikoku um specifically what were some of the 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 cool things that people can expect to see if they were to do that pilgrimage the people you meet you're going to meet a lot of nice people the people in shikoku are very nice people it's like totally different from where i live or tokyo i mean you walk by people in shikoku whether they're Two-year-old kids, I mean, they're, whether they're 13-year-old kids or they're teenagers or they're mid, mid-life adults or older people, they all will look at you and say, konnichiwa, or they'll, they'll give you a greeting. With all them. They'll look at you and bow down to you. It's amazing, the warmth of the people in Shikoku. This, if I had a choice and I had a lot of money, this is somewhere that I would definitely want to buy property to spend time in. Shikoku is a beautiful place. Yeah, and, you know... What also another thing that a beautiful thing that you're gonna really realize when you do the Shikoku pilgrimage is how beautiful the sky is, the clouds, the formation of the clouds, how much different formations there are, sunsets and sunrises. You're gonna take a lot of appreciation in that. And the other thing you're gonna really appreciate is those overcast days. Those are the perfect pilgrim days where the sun isn't shining, the clouds all over, making it cool, but there's no rain. Mm -hmm. Overcast days are those gloomy days that kind of make people lazy, kind of make people real drog, groggy. But for a pilgrim, that's like heaven. When we see those days, it's like we can walk really far because it's perfect conditions for a pilgrim. Nice. Wow, that was fascinating. Uh, anything else you want to add about your trip to uh, Kyoto or Shikoku? Well, good to be home. I left the house on, on August 5th. Got back to Japan on September 2nd or 3rd. Had to jump on a train the next morning to Kyoto. Left Kyoto on the 5th. Finally got home here on the 10th. Wow. So, yeah, I'm finally home. Watched the UFC last night. Oh, this morning. I watched the UFC this morning. And cleaned my ponds today. And, you know, just doing a little bit of relaxing Tomorrow, I have a day off. I'm relaxing again. The following day, 
we're kicking off Shoshi's training. It's gonna start up. Nice. Busy yeah. times. Yep, busy times. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, if you've got any more questions about pilgrimage, all that sort of stuff, please put it in the comments. And yeah, uh, we will talk to you guys again soon. Shoot. All right. <laughs>